Welcome to another edition of My Thai TV with George and Hambone. How's it going, everybody? Today we've got a great show for you. Last week's show was a complete success, so we decided to come back a week later and uh, discuss White Russians and what, you know, the greatness that is the White Russian. I've never had one before, so we get a little bit of education from Hambone. I was a bartender for years. We are also going to talk about Heroes and Villains, which you went to this week. I went to the Heroes and Villains Con down in Sea Caucus. And uh, let's see, we're going to be talking about the, the aftermath of the Royal Rumble. We're going to save that for last because we heard some complaints there was too much wrestling. So we're going to save that for last. You can just shut off afterwards. We're going to uh, we're gonna do a little unboxing, aren't we? A little unboxing, and we're going to talk about our sweet new knives. Knives. We've decided that as men, we needed knives, so we bought knives. Uh, guns are next, obviously. But right now, we're going to stick with knives. So, um, where do you want to get started with a cocktail? Because this is my Thai TV. Let's so, what do we got? With cocktail. So, what I'm going to make for you tonight is the perfect White Russian. Now, the White Russian has been announced around since 1949. It started as the Black Russian. It only became the Right Russian with the addition of cream. And I feel like I'm saying Russian like Chekhov. Like, yeah, it's rolling off my tongue. Uh, so, what we're going to do is we are actually going to make the perfect White Russian. Uh, Maybe it was 22, 23. I was on tour in Louisville, uh, down in Kentucky. We ended up in a bar called Woody's where we were drinking free as the band. And this was a few years after The Big Lebowski came out in 1998, so everyone was drinking White Russians. So the bartender there looks at me and he says, Hey, you guys like White Russians? And we said, Of course we do, especially because they were free. So he goes, I will teach you how to make the perfect White Russian as long as you promise, promise me, you will never make this drink south of the Mason-Dixon line, and I said, of course. So I why, why? Why south of the Mason-Dixon line? Is it because it's Russian? No, because, I mean, he called it the Kentucky Cossack. Uh, the Cossacks were East Slavic-speaking people who became their own military uh, in the Ukraine and Russian, so I felt like that was way above his pay grade, especially uh, around that time. I think he just was trying to be friendly, and we were all drunk, and we were drinking for free, so we just felt good both committing to the lie. So here we are, so many years later, I'm gonna teach you how to make the perfect white Russian. So from what Craig tells me down at Woody's in Louisville, this is the way you do it. So we're gonna start with some Smirnoff vanilla vodka. Now you can use any kind of vanilla vodka. Smirnoff is pretty reasonable for the price, and since 2005, it's been crushing it in vodka competitions, even being out such brands as Grey Goose and Kettle One, so. Smirnoff. 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 Yeah. But so, what, so one of the big things we got told last time is that they would like to see, raise the glass a little bit. We want to see what's going on. I think my, my mother complained. I'm going to move the heavy cream over here so maybe we can, oh. maybe we can see what's going on a little bit. So here we go. Uh, you got to listen to mom. Mom. Mom wants to know. Mom's mom not dead. Mom's not dead. No, it was just grandma. Just grandma. Just grandma. Yeah, and my mom doesn't drink, so this is all new to her. So uh, Shmirnoff Vanilla Vodka, uh, pretty good. I'm a big fan, and I will tell you, I've asked many bartenders, and four out of five bartenders agree, you can't tell the brand after the second drink, especially if it's mixed. So here we go. We are going to put in a full ounce of vanilla vodka. One ounce of vanilla vodka. Now, I've already got the ice in there, so we are ahead of the game. Take that. Thank you. We are going to put in, this is Kahlua. It is rum and coffee liqueur. It's a staple, and it should be a staple in any household. We're going to put in a half ounce of this. Half ounce of Kahlua. Half ounce of Kahlua, just like this. Now this is easy. We're using the Jigger here. It is, we'll show you a picture later on. It's all measured out. I'm used to, as a bartender, speed pours, but this is actually working out perfectly. Yeah, but I've always been told, as a true mixologist, that we should be doing, using the, the proper tools of the trade, because eyeballing it wastes money. Yeah. Spoken like a true bar owner. Now, normally, we would go right to the heavy cream, and that would completely solidify the White Russian. In fact, the White Russian is, is typically made with vodka and Kahlua. We're going to add a couple other special ingredients. So the way it was taught to me, where you use a little bit of Bailey's Irish cream, goes great in coffee, especially if you're drinking coffee and shoveling snow. We're going to put in a quarter ounce of that. Now, one of the secret ingredients that I was told about is a little bit of butterscotch uh, schnapps. Now, Here's the thing, you buy one of these bottles, it's gonna last you forever because... It's like orange, or it's, it's like a orange curacao. Yeah, exactly. You are putting so little into everything, one bottle goes a long way. So we're not gonna measure this because it's just... A dab. Just a dab. Just a, little, a dab. A little dab will do you. So 
So here we go. Now we're going to add the heavy cream. You're going to fill the blast the rest of the way with the heavy cream. This is not a low calorie drink. Ah, uh, you know what? That is the common thought of many people. Heavy cream. Well, actually, never mind. I'm reading it. It's per <laughs> tablespoon. Yeah, this is not. Cheers. This is not going to. weight loss. It's not going to sit well with your New Year's resolution. So we're going to pop this into our sugar cup right here. And one of the things I want to show you is the secret, secret, double secret ingredient, which is the Ready Whip. So you're just going to put in a little shot of that. That's going to add that little extra milkshake feel to it. Shake it up real good. I'm loving it. That's I'm it. loving it. Uh, just so you guys know, while he's shaking, we are we we set up this week so we can actually answer your questions. So go right ahead. We are um, we are we have an iPad. We can actually see what we're doing this time. Don't mind me if I'm looking down. I'm not reading notes. So I, I call this. The Louisville Lebowski. Cheers, the Louisville buddy. Louisville. One more time. The Louisville Lebowski. Thank you very much. The dude abides. So, it does taste like a milkshake. Ah, oh, damn. And this will bring all the boys to the yard. And damn right, it's better than anything you can make at home. The alcohol is subtle. Mm hmm I could probably have about seven of these. Oh my God, you'd be so sick afterwards. So it is, so it's unlike the Mai Tai where you just keep drinking until like, cause it's fruity and you don't even know you're getting drunk. This, you can only have so much cause you'll vomit. Yes, because it's, it, it is, it is a milk based beverage. And so I went out a little beforehand. I had a couple beverages. I drank straight vodka because I knew if I started with beer, I would be not be in the clear by the time we got done with this episode tonight. How many have you had? Like, bef like in, in, in total amount of like one of these you've had in one sitting. In one sitting? Yes. Three. 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 This is, to me, the equivalent of drinking a wine cooler or a Mike's Hard Lemonade or a Mike's Hard Long Island Iced Tea, where it's it's all sugar. It's all sugar. It's going to rot your guts afterwards. So the safe bet is to have a few of these to get you started and either transition to a vodka club, uh, some kind of gin-based drink, or just go to beer. Just ride it out with beer. That's the way to go. Hangovers? Pretty bad if you get banged up on these, especially if you throw up afterwards. Anyway, one more cheers, and then let's go to Heroes and Villains. So, I only heard about Heroes and Villains because my friend uh, Dave Tang, I believe, went. Uh, okay. He does um, he does cosplay portraiture. He does like he sets up a booth and does like if you dress up in cosplay. Oh, I think he, I saw him downstairs. Yeah, it was he Asian. Yeah. Yeah, then it was probably Dave Tang. No kidding. Was, was there a was Shanna with him? Uh, I didn't see her. Tall redhead? Okay. Well, if, Dave, if you're on this right now, and we, you know, if you were at Heroes and Villains, feel free to, free to chime in. Um, with Comic Con becoming such a big success Huge. in the world, both New York and San Diego, um, uh, someone good to see you too. Good to see you too. Uh, with with Comic Con, Comic Con becoming so big, uh, there are starting to be there's starting to be a lot more of these smaller Comic Cons. Right. I know. I used to go to Wizard World in Philly, which was. A shit show. I mean, it was it just, was it was show. pretty much just like the Iron Sheik and whoever else, Lou Ferrigno. Right. And um, a bunch of like artists that, you know, it was all tier low. But this was also at the time when Marvel was going bankrupt. Right. DC was like garbage. And, and you know, there just wasn't a ton of great stuff. We used to go to see Stan Lee. But it looks like there is become has become a resurgence of quality mini Comic Cons. Is that kind of what Heroes and Villains was? What was it like? Well, Heroes and Villains was absolute, absolute quality. Where was it? It was in the uh, the Meadowlands Convention Center. Mm -hmm. uh, and I will tell you this. Um, big ups to them for putting on a, a great show. Uh, everyone, of course, had trouble this weekend because we got slammed with two feet of snow. They made the best of it. They really mm -hmm. did make the best of it. Was They're, it on Saturday? It was on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay. Which and day did you go? I, I just ended up going on Sunday just because I wanted to get it in my house. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to get it in my house, and I knew it was going to be there, and... I wanted to see the arrow panel that they were doing, so I rolled down there to go see it. I've been to a lot of cons. Uh, you've been to a lot of cons, mm -hmm. and you're right, back in the day, it was always a shit show. I think now because of the way technology works, and there's a lot more easy access and instant gratification, and let's face it, famous people, they know if they want to keep their shows on the air, they have to meet the fans. Mm -hmm. And they can make a shitload of money meeting the fans. Uh, I went to New York Comic Con this year, and it was just super overcrowded, however, I took my best friend to meet Nathan Fillion. I paid almost a hundred bucks to get a photo with the two of us and Nathan Fillion. We walked out, it was already emailed to our phones, and there was three prints made, and we're good. You're all set and you're good to go. So it's no more going to a con, meeting George Romero or someone or Elvira. Love you, always. Meeting Elvira and taking a photo with a disposal camera, a one megapixel phone. I mean, it's legit. I have the photo hanging in my, in my bedroom right now. 
it's pretty huge. So went down to Heroes and Villains, showed up there. I uh, showed up late because I, we had to shovel out the driveways. We got two feet of snow this weekend. And I just started walking around. They had indoor bounce houses for the kids. The arrow panel was on the stage. They had a photo center downstairs. A lot of great vendors going on. And they had a lot of people. It was mostly DC Universe TV guests there. So you had Stephen Amell, Robbie Amell, the cast of Gotham, uh, other people from Arrow. I hate DC. I know you hate DC. Like, I passionately hate DC. But you like, need to DC watch the is, I mean, it's like watching WCW. We're going to hold the wrestling conversation later. But yeah. there's nothing... I, Remotely interesting about DC, other than like one Batman movie and that Joker died in real life. You gotta watch The Flash. The Flash. Yeah. I tried The Flash and I made it to three episodes. I got a little bored. We started watching, I don't know, Fargo season two, which was significantly better. Well, I can tell you exactly why you hated The Flash. Yes. It's because you went to the fridge on a commercial break, break and you drank the Haterade. I drank you the drank Haterade. The Haterade, the Haterade and was in full You force. couldn't get through The Flash because I will tell you, it's the best show on TV right now. I'm trying. I, I have okay. tried. I heard, yeah, again, to Arrow first. You just don't know what the hell's happening. Arrow's a little tough. Now, I love Arrow. Arrow's a little tough because it is more of a CW-style show. There's a lot of abs and cheekbones and love. The Flash is a straight-up superhero show. Um. So, you. So it's heavy DC. Was there a Marvel presence at all? No, not for the TV front. It was mostly DC. However, I got some great pictures taken with the 501st Legion. Mm -hmm. uh, and I talked to some people about cosplay for our... Han Solo, which is one of the things I want to do for this Halloween upcoming, one of my four costumes. That Old I will Han be Solo or young Han Solo? Actually, new Han or Solo. Or dead Han Solo. Oh, he should have said spoilers first. Dude, if you haven't seen the movie yet, yet. Yeah, it's your problem. Yeah. Bro, it's been out for a while. Uh, it was Old Han Solo. I wanted to ask about the holster blaster combo he had. It was great. Uh, I actually paid 10 bucks to get my picture taken. It was, you had a choice. You could either be in the TARDIS or you could be in the Lazarus Pit from Arrow and Batman. So I paid $10 to get my picture taken in the TARDIS, and nothing says undateable on Tinder like a guy popping out of a TARDIS going like this. So, yeah, it was a, it was a pretty cool con. I would highly recommend going. It's probably going to be a lot better for people when there's not a billion inches of snow on the ground. So my complaint about Comic Cons is you pay like 30 bucks to get in, and then you have to pay for everything in there. And I just find right. it's kind of like, like Epcot, which is pretty horrible, too. I, I just... <clears throat> Uh, that's not my bag. Um, is this one of those things where you just go in there and you have to pay for everything when you're in there? Uh, yes. I call that the I call that the um, the chiller theater model. Yeah, the a la carte model. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes. That being said, what you're going to be getting out of it is a lot of quality. What you're going to be getting out of it is you know if you go here at this time, you can go and meet Stephen Amell. You can mm -hmm. go meet the kid who's like this big and he's playing Batman now, wearing the big boy pants. You can you can go in and have the experience that you want to have. So it's not it's not anymore where you had people on TV who are just TV actors, or you had people in movies who wouldn't want to make the transition to TV. Like these people have a heavy Twitter presence, Facebook presence, Instagram presence. I mean, John Barrowman was there. He was on Doctor Who as Captain Jack, and he's on Arrow as Merlin. And the whole weekend, he was just doing Facebook Live videos, talking about what he was doing, how they were stranded. They actually went on the turnpike and helped a dude whose car got in a snowbank. So you have the Green Arrow, you have Merlin, you have the, pretty much the entire cast Arrow pushing your car out of the snow. Um, you know, I think it's cool. I think, it, I think it's cool if you, if you enjoy being a fan, if you want to be a part of something, you get to go there. A lot of people dressed up in costumes, little kids who are just psyched. And that's awesome. It's always awesome. Uh, so you recommend it for next year? I do. Re I mean, I do if recommend it. it, for it, it will come back. It will come back. I do recommend it for next year. There's actually a lot of good cons. You have the Walker Stalker Con, which is the Walking Dead Con, which is run by the same people who do the Heroes and Villains. Uh, I'm not sure if they do the East Coast Comic Con as well, but they do it. Uh, actually, that's a, actually a different company. But there's a lot of smaller cons where you can somewhat get a better experience and not feel like you're like this the entire time, getting hit in the head with someone whose cosplay is a, a box on their head. So, I, we used to go, a comic con to us was the Wayne Hilton, I believe. Oh, yeah. And we used to go, I think, at Fairfield, I don't know, it was on 46, and we used to go there, and you pay like 10 bucks again, but you get a ticket for like 5 bucks. Like, yeah, yeah. And, and it would just be old fat men, rows of them, mm -hmm. with boxes of back issues, charging yeah. like $1,000 for an early issue of like X-Men. And G.I. Joe figures. We used to go for G.I. Joe figures. Oh, yeah. And people would buy them. Nope. They would spend the money there. And it was just really... You could do the whole room in like five minutes. There was no guest stars. There was no, there was stars. no yeah. panels. It was just like the dredges of society and me. 
yeah. and my friend Jeff Ferenz. Um, well, Jeff collected G.I. Joe's. He loved G.I. Joe's, the original ones. He was wide, uh, the aircraft carrier, kind of reliving our youth, but he was doing it before we actually had money to do it. Um, and he met one of these vendors right. who invited us back to their home to see his, his G.I. Joe collection. And we, being stupid and 16, 17, Is this going to be a Dudley in the Bike Shop thing? It was it was it was not that bad, but it was pretty awful. We we went to this guy's house, and this guy is like mother, who's like kind of like paraplegic, opens the door, and it starts to feel a little Texas Chainsaw Massacre-ish, and and he brings us down into the basement, and like everything is wrapped in plastic, <laughs> like like not box plastic, but like like Ziploc plastic. Yeah. And, and he's like, look, I have Alpine, I have Tripwire, I have Cobra Commander with the metallic armor, but I also have, like, I have porn, too. Like, I have, I have porn. And Jeff really wanted the Rolling Thunder oh, in Oh, seriously, Jeff really wanted some porn. No, 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 no. And, 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 and it was just like one of those stories, I'm like, I really want to leave. But the guy started talking in detail about his porn collection, and it was just... Horribly awkward. We thought we were gonna die, and I pretty much had to like do like the like the we gotta go, we gotta go right now because we might not survive this trip to this guy's basement. And sadly, we had a lot of those experiences trying to buy GI Joes as children, and 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 this is you know I, I'm surprised I've come out alive and doing so well, and 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 my GI Joe collection still thrives to this day. And you have both your kidneys, and I have both my kidneys. Speaking of toys, it's time for an unboxing. All right. This week, we have Loot Crate. Loot Crate is a monthly box that costs about 20 bucks, 20 bucks all in with shipping and handling. Uh, we are not sponsored by Loot Crate. And we in all pay. honesty, we've been trying to, like, to get off the Loot Crate bandwagon because they are in a bad habit of every other box is horrible. And I don't mean horrible as in, like, you know, this is just, I didn't really need this because I'll sell on eBay. We're talking about like Pikachu headgear. Bad. And, um... I gave it to my little cousin. He was really excited. He's so four. It, it was... It, it gets really bad. But then you have like... Then they'll follow it up with a Funko Pop and like some really cool stuff like the villain set that they did. The Villains 2 a couple months back with the Back to the Future. Well, right off the bat, this is a very slim box. Which is always a bad sign. Always a bad sign. And it, it's called Invasion, which I have absolutely no interest in Space Invasions. No, neither do I. And um, it's an other box, which means last month was really good. So this month might suck. And just so you know, next month has already been revealed, which means I can't unsubscribe because it's The Walking Deadpool. The Best Walking Deadpool. So let's open this up. Let me know what's in there. So one of the things that I, I do love about Loot Crate is they do these wraparound boxes. So if you wanted to actually display the box, you could so the box is kind of its own prize uh so we have a t-shirt here it's an x-files t-shirt is that x-files it's x-files i didn't know until i saw the label so we need to stop for a quick second have you seen the new x-files yet? i have not yet okay so i haven't either so we probably should stop talking now i only did not watch because of the royal rumble um but Which i hear awesome. our friends who are big x-files fans say it's awesome but they could be jaded AV Club gave it like a C plus. So, from what I've heard from uh, most of my friends, is that the first episode of the X Files was kind of eh, the second X Files episode was back to form. Uh, I did hear some of the dialogue. I was at my buddy's house. And I heard Joel McHale coming through from the other room, and you can't mistake Joel McHale's voice. Who's uh, Joel McHale from Community? Who is? He was Jeff Winger on Community. He was the host of The Soup. Yeah, I'm doing enough. You know what I really need? Another white Russian? No cookies. 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 <laughs> oh, How do I need did cookies? did not think to get cookies? Like, I would dunk in alcohol. This is that bad, like, good. Bad or good? Or bad, bad like good, like, bad, like, way. I could, like, have this 2,000 calorie milk ch oh, Yeah. I'm, it's doing wonders to me right now. And I need cookies. Okay, so what else is in this box, Hambone? So, oh, God. It's, it's an off month, isn't it? I think it's a dog toy. But it's a face hugger, but he's a happy face hugger. Because who doesn't like hugs? It's a, um, it's a funny, which might, it's an alien. It is a face hugger. It looks like a, um, I don't know. I don't, I'm probably never going to use that ever again. A giant rubber band? 
So we basically just have stuff to throw at the cameras. Well, wait for it. So you get a little X Files flashlight and a three pack. <laughs> <laughs> We could have used that during the storm. We could have used that during the storm, but they gave you a three pack of batteries. Wait, 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 I don't know if this is a flashlight or if this was one of those things to see if there's cat urine anywhere. <laughs> Which e is basement. Or they give you a multi pass from the fifth element winner. Garbage. Um, a mini vinyl figure of Space Invader. I'll open that up. This might be the only thing I care. Oh, but it's already got an open. It's already visible, so it's not really like yeah. a blind pack. Uh, the loot pin. They've actually. Oh, this is really awful. I mean, this is kind of like an ice cube. Yeah, it's like an ice cube. It's disappointing. Like when you get these months, and it's like twenty bucks for like, like, like why, why? So I will say this: Loot Crate has stepped up their pin game. Uh, this is actually a metal pin, probably to keep up with the Funko metal pins that they do. Still not that impressive. I really think Funko and their Marvel Collector Core and their Smuggler Bounty boxes are kicking their ass uh, they're just all over the place. Stomping them mold hole and walking them dry. There, there better be like the deed to a castle in there. I don't know. So it's one of their mini prints, and it's War of the Worlds. We're not getting any questions, people. If you want to question us, we are here. We will answer and anything you want. The day the earth stood still. That's kind of cool. They're nice. They're not twenty dollars nice. Is there? Even, there's another one in there. And I mean, look, folks. I could go to any supermarket and buy batteries. But it was nice to them. Like, how much would it have sucked though if you got it and there were no batteries? I'm already disappointed. I actually with like these. these. These might go up in my cubicle. They might go up in your cubicle. Batteries. They're, on, sadly, they're not signed and numbered. Yeah, I mean, if they were like X Files batteries, I could see that, but they're just batteries. That drink is amazing, amazing. That's yeah. possibly one of the best drinks I've ever had. I'm probably gonna make another one. Oh no, it's not my tie good. I'm sorry, it's good. It's not my tie good. I get that. I understand. That. But it's not because of your quality of your of your drinking structure. It's because of the fact that it is that it contains the deed to a basement filled with GI Joes and pornography. Clearly, that was what was in there. Why are you checking your phone? I'm Stop telling people that we're on. I'm answering questions. They should know we're on. The question we is, on are we on? The answer is, always. Always. So, um, let's talk about knives. Let's talk about knives. So, the other day, Hambo, I've always been like, you know, I don't have a knife. I need a knife. I'm a man. I need a knife. And I've never been able to, like, like, I always like the ones that are, like, small. You can throw them. Um, but I, I, I don't own one. And, um, and... Recently, Hambone's like, you, were, you said, we need knives. We need knives. Now, uh, part of the thing with my job is I always carry a knife in my pocket. And it was a cool knife. It just kept falling out of my pocket. And it actually wasn't the first knife to ever fall out of my pocket. So I'm really hoping that no one Stephen Avery's me with the first knife that I lost. I wasn't going to make it too. So I got a new knife. It was a little bit bigger. I called my buddy Dave, or our buddy Dave, and I said, hey, what are you using the knife that you carry in your pocket? So he turned me on to the Leatherman. Uh, I got a Skeletool. Now, what's cool about it, see, I got the stainless one. Uh, seven tools in one. Fits right in my pocket. Screwdriver, two different kinds of screwdrivers. I have little pliers, two different kinds of wire cutters. I actually have a pocket knife here as well, and a bottle opener. So welcome, it does welcome everything Katie I need. Graham to the show. Welcome Katie Graham to the show. Welcome Katie Graham. I think Graham. we need to just start like psyching ourselves for people to join. Thank you, Katie Graham, for joining the show. Keep going with your scale tool. So yeah, seven tools in one. I got a great deal on it from Amazon.com, and it's been in my pocket from the moment I've got it, and it's coming very handy. I was actually at a bar tonight. They had a problem with one of their lights, and the construction guy goes, "Oh man, if I only had a screwdriver." And I pulled it out and I said, here, buddy, use it. Yours a little more stiff than mine. You have a serrated blade, That's though. That's what she said. Why? What are the benefits of the serrated blade versus the uh, non-serrated blade? Someone wanted close-ups, but we can't really do close-ups because this is Periscope, not yeah. real TV. Um, serrated blades... Uh, they're you good. have no idea. You could just say, I have no idea. No, they're, they're actually good for when you have something that's a little little tougher, that has a little more grit to it. Uh, so, for instance, when you're in a restaurant and you're cutting something, like a flat blade does a good job, but a serrated blade is for when you have something like heavier, like a steak or shrink wrap. A serrated blade comes in very handy. I, um, 
sawing. Sawing is a perfect. And the short answer is sawing. I actually was thinking scaling fish. Weird Creek. Because if you were scaling fish, like you know, I did back when I was, you know, when I was in the island of Hios where I was born, Creek. and I had to capture my own fish to survive. That's what I used to do: is use my knife. I also bought a seven-in-one scale tool. We are not sponsored by Leatherman, but we should be. I, however, got the carbon fiber one because it's black. Yeah. And because I just thought you needed a black one because black is better. Um, and I also love the fact that you can do a one-handed pull. I do not have a serrated blade. Mine's better for stabby stabby. Um, <laughs> that's about all I could say. I have a knife now. I feel definitely more manly. I keep it strapped to me. Uh, once you go black, you're right. Thank, Don. You, Don thank Becker. you, Don Becker. Uh, you know, once you go stainless steel, you can't go back either. Yeah, it's the same thing for appliances. <laughs> I'm a big fan of pink fridges. You have a fantastic. Dude, this, this one is way, way, way more. Uh, I'm definitely feeling a lot better than I'm. Also, haven't eaten yet. Um, so we are now going to talk. We're going to go into the final thing. We're going to talk about pro wrestling now. If you don't want to hear about pro wrestling, you can just turn off the Periscope now. That oh. being said, don't turn it off. Don't turn it off. We actually have a lot to say about pro wrestling. So, But we will not talk that much. We just feel that since we did our Royal Rumble predictions last week, that we should talk a little bit about post-Royal Rumble and Absolutely. maybe include Raw a little bit. We will only do this for pay-per-views, so don't think that this is going to turn into a permanent pro wrestling podcast. And we just lost seven viewers. Uh, I kid, I kid. Um, it was eight. It was eight. I, I thought this was the best Royal Rumble ever. Uh, I think, so, as far as with the exception of when Shawn Michaels fought Undertaker, and uh, it was at the end of the Royal Rumble, it was just Shawn and Undertaker, and they did a half hour full blown match afterwards. Awesome. But I can't tell you anything else about that show. This one, top to bottom, every match was incredible. Um, I know Triple H stinks, but you know what? I don't think they could have gone any other way. I think that was my prediction. Prediction was Triple H winning, and that's the way they went. Well, we actually we discussed this. We actually discussed this in depth, uh, on screen and off screen. Uh, you know, they really, really try to get people to like Roman Reigns. They they did nothing short of bank stealing and borrow to get people to like Roman Reigns, and they just can't get him over. They can't get him over to save them lives. So I think that as a, a good stall tactic, putting the belt on Triple H was the way to go because now they have a little little wiggle room up until WrestleMania to figure out what the next move is. I mean. Whether they try to build him up strong enough to seem like he could carry the belt, well, Roman and Dean is what you're actually going to get at Fastlane to see who goes to fight Triple H at WrestleMania with the inclusion of Brock Lesnar. It, you know, so let's not go to Raw. Let's yeah. go through Royal Rumble. Okay. Amazing things. The women's match, incredible. The Great ending of the match. women's match, amazing. Sasha Banks coming out. I know Huge. they buried Becky, but I think they're going to go for a three-way next, so I don't mind. You know, uh, jumping a little bit ahead to Raw, though, I don't feel like they, they buried Becky yet. Uh, they need to turn him into a powerful bully heel. I assume that you mean Roman Reigns. I guess you mean Roman Reigns? I'm thinking he means Roman Reigns. I, I don't think... Uh, maybe. I don't know at this point. I mean, point. he's a giant, badass Samoan dude. He should be doing what a giant, badass Samoan dude would do. Beat people up. I be you, angry. I thought you were going to say lie on a beach. And beach. surf. That is also... <laughs> get bad tattoos. Get bad tattoos. Taco stand. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, really ideally. But in the wrestling sense, you should just be whooping up on people. Uh, I don't think they buried Becky yet. I think she's still in the game. I think they definitely buried the entire rest of the women's division. Mm -hmm. um, I thought Owens versus... Uh, versus um, I'm drunk and don't remember we fought. Owens versus Dean Ambrose. Ambrose. Duh. Was was tremendous. It was like the match of the night. It was blown away. Um, the the tag title was whatever, but it was a perfectly fine match. It was fun. It was it was fun to watch, and it wasn't bad. And Callisto won the belt again. Callisto, yeah, I mean that was you saw that coming like a train on a moonless night. How is it the Rock got all the charisma and talent, leaving next to nothing for Roman or the Usos? Because uh, he got all the charisma. Yeah, but then again, he does do weird, awkward, uncomfortable, sexist dialogues during Raw that I was like... We're going to get to that in a second, yeah. And then, let's just wrap it up. I mean, AJ Styles during the Rumble, incredible. Fantastic. Sami Zayn's com Zayn coming in. You know, everyone said that Sami Zayn didn't get enough time in there. But how much time are you going to give Sami Zayn? He finished telling a story where he eliminated Owens for putting him out of business for months at a time. So, he did exactly what he was supposed to do in there. Get a cheap pop, 
and take Owens out. I love the fact that there wasn't a point where there was 72 people in there and it was just, you couldn't tell what was happening. There it was, was good pacing. Just a perfect amount of people, tons of little stories going on. It was the best Royal Rumble I've ever seen. Until the end, which just got weird because Roman Reigns got pulled out of a stretcher so he looks weak. He shows up later. 30 minutes later. 30 minutes later with no bandages or anything. And, and, and for a person who was hobbling, he just trucked it right back trucked in Trucked it back in and then he... Um, we know you love Roman. And then and then he gets throws down, thrown out. He's not. He didn't even make it to the end. And and, and that, I thought that was great. I, I don't I, know if you're gonna make one for all and you're gonna do that. They just botched the whole thing. And I don't know. I mean, I would have loved to see Ambrose throw him, be the one to throw him out. I'm kind of waiting for that to happen because all oh, they're like we're brothers, we're brothers. I mean, they. I feel like they've been setting it up for a long time. They've been telling a certain story and they have not delivered on that story because at some point Ambrose is gonna have to turn on him. Women love Roman Reigns. Dude, girls love Roman Reigns. Love Roman Reigns. I love him. Um, as far as Raw, I thought Raw was really good, except for the the whole thing was set up around everyone's going to have their best matches, and we're going to cherry pick the best to go up against Triple H. And so you had Kevin Owens win. You had you had AJ Styles in the amazing match win. You had all these people, and at the end it just ends up becoming Dean Ambrose and Roman Reigns, and they're like, "I'll throw you in with Brock." Can we talk about AJ Styles for a Please. second? I was watching that match, and I had to actually watch it. Ambrose, you're right. Ambrose should have turned Ken. Uh, I was watching it. I had to watch it with the sound off. I had to take a call from work, and I'm watching it with the sound off. So I watched it today with the sound on, and watched it today with the sound. Uh, watched it yesterday with the sound off. Today with the sound on. It's two different matches when you watch it without the sound. That being said, uh, I appreciate Jericho for putting over AJ Styles. Uh, hashtag Puffy Jericho. Hashtag Puffy Jericho. Or hashtag, as Don Becker says, why to dad bod. Um, I appreciate him for putting over AJ Styles. Uh, that being said, you know, I'm not familiar with AJ Styles' work up until now. He put on a hell of a show. And for looking at Roman Reigns, who actually does a Superman punch of one of his moves, you've got a guy like AJ Styles who clearly has a full move set. Arsenal. It's a robust move set. And he did a springboard off the top rope that, uh, from what I've been told, ends with a, a flying uh, forearm. He actually did a, a Superman punch off the top rope, flying through the air. It completely devalues everything Roman Reigns does with a Superman punch. Completely it was pretty great. awesome to watch. Completely a great mm, Roman. Yes, we, we get know it. you like Roman. Um, I heard he might be in Playgirl next month. That's not true. Um... I also was a big, look. I like the Rock segment. I did like the Rock segment. So the the Rock seg the Rock. I feel like had two segments. Yes. He had this segment from when he got out of the car up till he got to the curtain, which was garbage. It was sexist. It was weird. It was very uncomfortable. No, I did like the Big Show part of it. The Big Show part of it was okay, but the Rock got out of his thing, and I thought he was gacked out of his mind. Uh, I'm like, what's up with the Rock? Why is he being like intense and weird? And then he gets to the curtain, and he kind of just does the, we're home. Finally, The Rock has come home. And from the minute he did that, he was The Rock that we've all known and loved for many years. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, yes, he, he might have been high as a goddamn kite. We can't prove it. We don't know it. But he, he got out of that car, and something was up. He kind of got his game face on when he got to the curtain. And he gets out there, and he does a promo where he's up there. He's doing his thing. He's like, you know what? We're going off script. And I actually believe that The Rock went off book and he just got out of the ring because he's probably the only person who can get away with that without getting fired. Uh, he did a great thing with the people in the crowd who are dressed as The Undertaker, Randy Savage, Hogan, and The Rock. He had a great back and forth with The New Day. He brought The Usos out and boom, boom, Bob's your uncle. And it's all on BleacherReport.com. So I'm I'm excited to see what happens. I, I, I think Dean Ambrose versus Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar won't be good even though the way they got there is horrible. I am a fan of Triple H as a champion because I am a fan of Triple H. And well, his promo at the beginning of the night was stellar. Mm -hmm. I mean, he came out, uh, you know, and say what you will about Triple H. Say what you will about many of the guys who gets up, who get up and cut promos. No one cuts a promo like Triple H. Yes, we can totally smell what The Rock is cooking for your face. <laughs> so, anything else you'd like to add about? I am a huge fan of The New Day. I just want to put it out there that I think The New Day has changed pro wrestling for the better. Have changed. Has changed. I, I, am I, am I blinking? 
Am I blinking? I just want to make sure I'm blinking. Not blinking. I I am a <laughs> I am a unicorn to the end, and and I will uh, I will I I think I think New Day is better than DX was at their highest point. Uh, I have to agree, and they got better merch too. Uh, yeah, we don't look ridiculous at all. Uh, so. Speaking of the Rock's promo, it really did push, and the New Day's promo, it did push the boundaries of the PG era with uh, Llama Penis. Llama Penis. Which is, is what I have on my head right now. <laughs> it glows. It glows. It, ah. is, it, it glows so well. Ah. And I am... Are you okay? Are you okay, John? I'll live, man. Dude, this right, the white Russian is wonderful. It's, yeah, that's great. I think we need to wrap up pro wrestling. I need to think we need to wrap up the show. I just want to point out that I today am wearing my brand new Mickey Mouse Polynesian Room, the new Polynesian Room, since they've redid it. It's classic. Hawaiian Aloha shirt, which is actually available right now on shopdisney.com. Not sponsored, but we should. Um, we are now basically need to just support our Aloha shirt to have it because we need to have a new one every episode, and we're going to run out after a few. I think me and Hamler should be switching shirts at some point. We might be. Um, anyway, I'm George Coronius. You can uh, get in touch with me through uh, at GLK Creative on Twitter, uh, Cult of George on Periscope. Go to cultofgeorge.george.com and find this show archived on YouTube because you know you want to. We might be on iTunes next week. That's awesome. Up top. Boom. Ow. Boom. Oh, unicorn <laughs> And um, and uh, how else can you find me? I don't know. Instagram, GLK Creative, local stop and shop. There's no days. GNR update. There's there's no GNR update. No, I no can't. I, there update. is none. There. I I don't know. Is Steve Adler in the band yet? Uh, oh yeah, they got Vegas. Oh, the Vegas shows are happening. They are so, happening. So we might be going to that if they're not sold out already. That's about all I got for GNR. This will not be a weekly GR, GNR section session. That would be a weird Dude, show. The White Russian. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and on Periscope at Handbreaker. Uh, you can also go to unwinnable.com where you can check out my podcast that I'm a co-host of, I the Beer Holder, where we spend an enormous amount of time being drunk and talking about Dungeons & Dragons with your hosts, Stu Horvath and Sean Dillon. Check it out. Anyway, I'm George. This is Hambone. This is my Thai TV. We shall be at back, I don't know, next week, the week after. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna be here until you guys tell us to get off the air. Take care. Signing off. Aloha. Теребитые поломаны крылья, серой болью всю душу свело. Because I gotta get up and shut it off. Yeah, you do. And the credits have to roll. Credits have to roll. Credits have to roll. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>